Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I was recently at an antique shop and I had found these vintage trifold Christmas cards and it was a huge stack of them and I knew I wanted to do a little journaling project with them and I was going to show you today how to do this. It's very easy. Um, I love the size of this because it um, is kind of like a traveler's notebook size. So I was thinking I would put some pages in on this side and then put some pages in on this side and have it kind of be a trifold journal that I could write down maybe some, you know, Christmas quotes or Christmas lists or recipes or anything just for, for the Christmas season. And I like this size because again, like, like, when you make cards, a lot of times card makers like to make tags because it's a smaller version of a larger project and you can easily decorate it and it's just it's just a quick little project you can make and that's the same thing with this. I've been making a lot of larger journals this season and I'm ready for something a little bit small but still I want to work with a lot of the extra Christmas supplies I have left over from all my journal making so I thought that would be perfect to kind of embellish uh, this journal and then um, kind of use up what I have right now and I thought I'd share the project with you. I actually started it and I was going to show you how to kind of finish it off. I'm not going to decorate the whole thing but again that's something that you know you can add at the end you know however you'd like. Um, if you don't have a uh, card like this, a tri-folding card. I actually have a few in my Etsy shop. That I had a huge stack of these cards. So I, I put a few in my Etsy shop. I have a few, had a few in some ephemera packs. And then I'm keeping some, obviously, for, for future projects. But um, they are available in my shop. Or another thing you could do is, I, I kind of measured this out. And if you open it up, it's actually uh, 10 and 7 eighths inches this way by 8 inches this way. So you could take a piece of 12 by 12 scrapbook paper, any of your favorite Christmas paper, trim it down to that size, and then fold it in a trifold and do the same thing. So you could participate in this project using that. Or if you happen to have another type of um, trifold card, definitely use that. Um, so let me go ahead and show you how I kind of got started on this. So I was trying to figure out what kind of paper to put in this because it's going to be a smaller journal and I wanted something thinner. So I was thinking I would just use copy paper, like printer paper, but I was thinking, you know, it'd be nice to have something that had something printed on it, you know, like some pretty Christmas photos, but scrapbook paper itself is a little bit thick. And I thought it would kind of be too many pages put together in this smaller journal, it'd be kind of too stiff and thick. So I wanted something thinner. So I was kind of trying to think of different things. And then I forgot that I had gotten uh, this, oh, wait a minute, it's over here, <laughs> this paper pad from Kathy Holden. Um, it's got, these papers are kind of like a, a collage paper. And it's, I don't even know how, I don't know what the thickness is, but it's almost has, the, it's a little bit thicker than printer paper, just a tiny bit but it is not as thick as scrapbook paper. But it's nice because it's printed on one side and blank on the other. And I hadn't used this yet for any projects, so I thought this would be perfect to add to this, car this card because this the designs on here are kind of like that old, the old-fashioned Christmas look. And I thought this would fit in really nice with the way that this card looks, the images on the card and the, the sentiments and everything. So... I thought this would be great to work with. Um, I'm trying to think of other things. You could, again, just use printer paper. Um, I think Tim Holtz also has some, some collage style paper that's thinner, so that would work. Um, you could even use, you know, if you had vintage wrapping paper or something like that, that might work. It might be a little more delicate, um, but, you know, you could do that. You could use uh, ledger paper. If you have, if you like to collect vintage ledger paper, you could add a ton of that in, in there. Um, I know the other side is usually blank, so that's another option too. So, you know, use what you have. This is supposed to be, you know, kind of just a, an easy project to kind of use up some of your supplies. Um, but I was really, I was excited because I um, hadn't used this yet and I had wanted to use this this year, but um, I just never had a project that it, it fit into quite yet. So anyway, so the next step was to kind of try and figure out how to fit the papers into the card. So I couldn't, th this paper pad is six by nine. So folding it in half was a little bit too narrow for putting it, um, sewing it into the, 
the seam of the card. So I knew I had to do kind of some tricky folding where I would only fold it not quite in half, but just close to in half. And But I wanted to still have um, the pages all kind of be similar in size when it came to when the book came together so what I ended up doing and I'll show you this I sewed in one side and I'm going to show you how I sew in the other side but what I ended up doing was I chose my my pages and then I did some kind of tricky folding so I started off by folding one page in half almost like a little over halfway to the top of the other side and I kind of this whole project is sort of eyeballing. I didn't do a ton of measuring um, just because it was just, every card is kind of different. And um, so, you know, the measurements weren't perfect. So I just thought I'd, I'd just kind of eyeball it. So I kind of, I did um, kind of folded it a little over halfway up and then fit it into the card to kind of see how it fit. I wanted to make sure that there wouldn't be any pages sticking out or anything like that. I did end up trimming some some things at the end, which I'll show you in a minute but I so I folded the first page up almost in half like this and then if you kind of if I flip through this you can see that the next page is longer and then the next page is shorter again longer shorter so you kind of get you know alternating sizes of pages and then you go over to the other side like that so I kind of like the way that looks it's sort of overlapping images and then you get some blank pages too and there's plenty of room for decorating so I'll show you how I do it because it's kind of easier to show you than to explain so hopefully it will make more sense once I show you how I do the other side but anyway I really like the way this turned out and um, I will be adding some embellishing and that kind of thing and maybe I'll just show it on Instagram what it ends up looking like um, once I finish it off but I got the first side done. So all I did was sew it in with a pamphlet stitch, just a real easy um, two big stitches here. And then um, I just tied it in the middle here. And I used some, I have a bunch of this colored, I usually use just plain linen colored wax cord to do my journals, but I thought it'd be kind of fun to use different colors. I have this huge bag of um, kind of, it's wax covered uh, string that I got on Amazon quite a while ago, but I chose some green and some red, and I thought that would be fun to kind of uh, use to sew in the pages. So, so I did this side red, I'm gonna do the other side green. The other side, I'm gonna use the same pages because this paper pad actually has two of every page. And I didn't end up using all of the pages in here. Some of them were horizontally, uh, horizontal on the, the the images were horizontal on the paper and that didn't really look good if I was gonna kind of fold it the, vertically so I ended up just leaving those um, so I pulled out any pages that were either just plain patterned or or kind of going vertically like that so then you, know, you can fold it up like that and so it would look good in this type of journal so let me go ahead and show you um, how I continued on to do the other side. So, so I'm just going to flip the journal over here, and this is where it's folded here. And I'll just kind of leave that open and set this aside. I already got started on my pages, so I'll kind of show you how I did the folding. I still need to trim these down. So what I did was I started off, like I showed you in the first page, I folded it a little over halfway up. And, you know, you can kind of see, I still need to trim off the end, but you can kind of see how it, it sort of fits in perfectly into the, the crease of the card. So there's nothing sticking out either way. So I'm using this as a template and then I'll just fold the other pages to match. So for each page, one page is going to be uh, folded halfway up a little over halfway up this way. And then the next page right here is gonna be folded in such a way so that when you put it in, it's actually gonna be kind of flipped. So you're gonna get flip back and forth, if that makes sense. <laughs> so I started off with this one and then I have this page here that 
I fold it on the other side the same way, so a little over halfway up, tuck that in like that, and then I have the next page folded like this again. I tuck that in like this. So it's kind of like an accordion sort of, and you alternate folds. So you got this one like this, and then you pop it in like this, and then the longer fold is sticking out of this side. And then do this one like that. So you got the shorter fold like that. And then the next one, you do the longer fold. I kind of messed up here, so <laughs> I folded the wrong end. Um, this paper is pretty forgiving, so it's once you get everything in and flatten it out, I don't think you'll be able to see it, see the extra fold in there. So that goes like that. And then I do a shorter fold this way, tuck it in like that, so you can kind of see how that's going. So it just makes it more interesting. So you've got the shorter fold, the longer fold, shorter, longer, shorter, longer, shorter. And then I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have nine pages that I'm going to be adding to this. So my next fold, since this is the short fold, my next fold is going to be the long fold. And I'm going to choose this sheet of paper here. And since I want the photo to be facing forward in the right direction, and I want the fold to be long like this, you want to fold it this way. So again, using this front page as kind of a template, I'm just going to make sure I fold this the right way. And it's nice to have a grid mat because you can kind of line everything up. And I'm, again, I'm just eyeballing this. <laughs> so you can see, kind of keep everything on the, the grid lines here, line that up. And it folds really nicely. It's, it's nice that the paper is really thin. So then that pops in right there. And you've got the, the longer fold on this side. And then all I have to do is do one more page. And I'm going to do it the short way. So again, I'm going to follow the first page as a template. And fold that like that. And then pop everything together. And you just want to make sure your images are all facing in the right direction when you're finished. So I've got blank pages here. That's in the right direction. So I hope this made sense. Let, ask me any questions if you have anything in the comments. Um, but it's pretty, pretty easy. So now, um, and then you, if you keep turning the pages, you get, you know, images going the other way. So that's, it's kind of nice. Uh, so next thing I want to do is trim down the pages so that they fit inside the card. So again, I'm just going to do some eyeballing. Um, once you, when you start putting, as some of you know who make journals, once you put a lot, pack a lot of pages together, you know, folded together, you're going to get some extra kind of sticking out. So we're going to need to trim that off as well. But I also want to trim off the end. And the best, uh, cutting tool to do that with is a guillotine trimmer, which this has been my favorite in my craft room all this year. I don't know how I went without having one for so long, but I'm just going to kind of measure out, make sure I've got, actually, I'm going to just, I think it was, it was eight inches. So I'm going to make sure I'm just going to trim it at eight inches. And it's nice because this whole thing, it's pretty thick and it fits right in here. So I'm going to trim it to eight inches. Make sure everything is kind of lined up perfectly. And you want to kind of hold down the uh, little plastic guide here. And make sure everything is flush to the top, flush to the blade. And then you want to just go down in one big... Um, motion. Okay. So that's nice and smooth. And then the next thing I want to do, this gets kind of tricky. Sometimes you got to like go back a little bit, 
go back and forth a little bit. Um, I'm just going to flip this over and I kind of, I want to trim off this extra here. So I'm going to hopefully be able to just do this in one, one motion again. So I'm just going to kind of trim off here. Again, you want to push this up to the top of the, the guillotine trimmer here and then really hold down on the guide and then one motion. All right, that looks really good. Okay, so I'm gonna double check that this fits. I'm pretty sure it will. So that's pretty much the hard part is just doing the folding and the trimming and then you're just ready to put it in. So I'm gonna make sure, let's see, I want everything facing the right way. So if I open this up, I'm gonna have this like this and then if we go to the back, I want it to be the same way. So I'm just gonna pop this in like this, make sure everything fits and that fits perfectly. So that's ready to go. So the next step is to just add the holes and do the pamphlet stitch. So what I'm going to do is, since this is a pretty thin, this whole pack together is pretty thin, um, I wanna kinda get all the holes lined up. You can use um, a piece of graph paper to kinda line up your holes. Um, I just got this new little tool. This is We Are Memory Keepers. It's a uh, book binding guide. And this is kind of interesting. I haven't tried some of the other options you can have with it, but you can do all kinds of different stitching with it to make your own books. Um, I just do the basic pamphlet stitch all the time, and that's what this part is for. You can um, punch your holes all at once, and it goes really fast. So this is kind of angled so that you can stick your fold right in here, and you kind of push it up like this. So I'm going to push everything up kind of line it up with the holes. And then there's these little, um, oh, first you have to put on the, there's this other guide you kind of pop on top of it. And I did mark these with, um, oh, here we go. I marked them with a little pen, just a kind of the area that I like to punch. So you pop that in at the top here. And then you secure it. I'm still on camera here. Secure it like this. And then this one's on the bottom. So you want to make sure that your fold is right where these holes are, like this. And then um, I marked with uh, Sharpie on the tool where I like to punch my holes. So I do one at the top and then one at the bottom like this and then one in the middle. So I just have three stitches. But this thing is kind of cool because you could do a ton of stitches if you wanted to and have it, you know, lots of extra stitching. I'm keeping this really simple though. Um, it comes with this little punch tool too, which is nice. So all I'm gonna do is just um, punch a hole up here. Make sure I am on camera, yes, okay. So and you wanna punch straight down so it's not crooked. there and then I'm going to punch in the middle that's where I made my mark there okay and then I'm going to punch right at the end here so this will make three holes in your journal and I'm just gonna take this off hopefully this lined up properly <laughs> yeah that looks good it makes the holes really nice too. They're nice and kind of open, but not they're not too big, but they're not too small either. So you can fit your um, thread through it. Okay, so on this side, I used red string. So I'm gonna use this green string and I have a needle. Actually, this book binding tool comes with a couple of different needles. It has a curved needle and a um, regular needle, but I had my own needle. So it's helpful to have a needle that has a really large um, eye in it so that you can fit this thicker thread through it. And um, I wouldn't even call it thread, it's more like string. 
but the string is coated and this isn't my favorite um, I have a better coated string that's like a kind of a thicker wax that I like better, um, but this will do. It's it's kind of, um, it's coated in kind of a lighter wax material, um, but I like the colors, so I thought um, this would be kind of festive for Christmas. So I'm going to use green, and what I do is I just kind of try to measure out enough so that I can do three stitches um, back and forth in the... Uh, in the journal. So I'm going to take measurements of the length of the journal and just kind of eyeball the amount of string I want to use. Okay, we're going to do, let's see, one, two, three lengths of the journal, and then I'm just going to trim off the string, and then the needle's really easy to thread. Okay. So you just want to kind of leave a little bit of a tail on there like that, and um, and again, however you like to stitch, you know, everybody's got their different way of stitching. I just, I'm doing this basic uh, pamphlet stitch. Um, I also like to have one of these things. This is a, um, I don't even know what this is called. It's like a, like a grip for, I'm not a seamstress, <laughs> so I don't know the lingo, but it's kind of a grip for holding on to your needle when you pull it through the stitch. And I'll show you how I use it in a minute. I, I, I got this idea from um, Kitty Witty Papercraft. She's had some great ideas for tools and using it. She, well, she's got all kinds of great journaling videos and everything, but she uses these. Um, it's, I think it's a needle pull, it's called. Um, and it just helps you grip onto the needle when you're trying to pull it through all these pages. So I'll show you how that works. But this is all ready to go and make sure all my holes went through. Yep, they went through the page like that. So I'm going to start in the middle. And I'm going to go all the way through. And again, this is where this comes in handy. So grab this, pull through till the tail comes out. And then I'm going to go up whatever side you want to go up. I go up, I'll go up this side on the left. Just make sure you get all the pages together. It also helps too. I probably should have stuck a uh, paper clip. Actually, I have it right here. If you paper clip the sides, it kind of helps everything stay together. But I didn't think to do that. Uh, so you want to try to get, make sure you're getting the holes in. I can just pull it through the tail and then I'm going to go through the middle. So you've got this tail sticking out here that you want to keep that right there. Put this through the middle, like that, pull that through and then you just want to kind of make sure everything is taut before you do the last stitch. So I'm going to pull on this to kind of make sure this is tight. And then I'm going to go up the back like that. And then again, you want to make sure everything is tight. And then I'm going to pull the tail through, pull the needle off. And kind of just make sure the pages are straight, everything's, the stitching is tight, that looks good. And then I'm going to tie it in the middle, just like this. And the coating on the, the thread or the string kind of makes it easier to tie a, a good knot in it too. I actually, the, the first stitch I made with the red string, I only did one knot. I think I'm going to do two knots just to be on the safe side this time, so... If you mess up, you can always pull out your stitch and do it again. It's because it's just one stitch. It's it's easy to do. And I'm just going to tie this a second time just for good measure. And then um, some people like to add little charms and things to the strings. You could do that. Or I'm just going to trim these kind of close to the knot here. Okay, take out the, the paper clip. And everything is all together, nice and flush and trimmed. And you've got a little mini journal. So you've got this side, and all these pages, and it's nice because there's some blank pages too. You can use them to write on or add, add a lot of embellishments too. Um, and then the other side, 
the same way. You've got the back of the card and then you've got more um, pages here, the different sizes, different folds here. And then you get the middle there. So there's lots of places to write, lots of places to decorate. Um, I've got a lot of this extra, like I've over on the floor, I have a ton of extra um, Christmas ephemera, trim, ribbon, all kinds of stuff. I mean, you could add some ribbon to the side of this page here, um, on this side, washi tape, any type of like Christmas stuff you just want to kind of throw into a project. Um, you can put it in a little project like this. I've got some of this um, matching ephemera for the Kathy Holden paper that's really nice too. It's kind of a vintage look that I might add to this. So like I said, I might go ahead and just show it on like an Instagram reel or something like that um, once I get around to kind of adding some more decorations. But this is really fun. And um, so, and this would actually make a nice gift too. You could tuck this into a basket of cookies, you know, after you decorate it and everything and um, maybe put in a little message of, as to, you know, how to use it, you know, that you could use it to um, write family recipes in or, or fun quotes during the the uh, holiday season that you hear from your kids, your grandkids, or whatever. And um, so this would make a really nice little addition to a gift basket too. You could you could add that. But as I said before, you don't need to use this specific card to make the project. Go ahead and use any extra 12 by 12 paper you have. Um, that would work really well too. So let me know if you have any questions, and I will see you in my next video. Music